Good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Duker from the Garage Journal Forum. I thought I'd uh, kind of give you a breakdown, a little video of the uh, latest project that I finished in the uh, workshop uh, this weekend. It's uh, completion of the wiring and uh, mobile base for my uh, Parmatic uh, 1200 drill press that I got a couple months ago at auction. Um, what I'll do is I'll walk you through uh, the upper part here, but I'll start down here at the base. Uh, I built a mobile base to be able to roll it around my shop. As you can see, I've got uh, a lot of stuff uh, sitting on either side of it here. Ability to move it around so I can uh, access... Uh, got a couple uh, 220 plugs and that allows me to, to move this around to access those and use one for my table saw and I can use it for this and welder and things like that. What it is, I put uh, each of these as a 300 pound caster, uh, some angle bracket, and then you can see I've got some side, basically I call them stabilizing uh, screws and you can kind of see you've got uh, feet on the bottom of each one of these. They basically just screw down, allowing me to stabilize it, basically lock it to the ground. That basically adds a six point of contact when I put both of them down on the ground. It locks the base from moving. It also adds a great deal of rigidity to the base. I have some pictures that I'll uh, post on the board to kind of show you how I made those, uh, put those together. I'll just kind of swing around here, just give you a little different profile of the base there. It's a pretty simple base, just a basically square. Uh, I reinforced it uh, with the bottom. I got some quarter inch plate on the bottom of both ends to be able to bolt it down, which I've yet to do. But you see, it allows me to, again to move it around, and by having those two side stabilizers, again, as I said, lock it in place, and to be able to uh, kind of increase the rigidity of it and keep the still the center of gravity fairly low. I'm going to start on, we'll kind of work our way up now to the top of the lathe and kind of show you the switch that I put on and basically the, uh, the VFD. I'll actually walk you now through the wiring of the switch and also the VFD, how I put those together. As you notice, I've got a giant stop switch sitting on the front here. I took the original switch out and looking at the directions for the VFD, it said to have it unswitched to basically going direct from the power source into the VFD. Um, unfortunately, where I had to mount this thing, it was obviously, you know, here's basically operating the quill and unfortunately the depth back here, if you were trying to, you know, emergency try to shut something down and try to reach back over here and try to fumble for this little bitty stop button back here, you know, I think a lot of damage could be done. And so I thought uh, Rockler had a sale on these big giant uh, router table switches with the stop button here. So I'm kind of using this as my emergency stop. I actually do can run it and start it and stop the, uh, the VFD from here. I think when they're talking about, I'm going to guess is from a switch standpoint, they must be talking about electronic starter or something like that on a three phase is avoiding basically running through that. But here I've got this uh, Rockler switch. I think it normally is like $39. I think it was on sale and I think they had a 20% off coupon. I think I ended up with tax and everything else coming out the door around $26, $27. Um, so I thought, you know, it would be pretty nice uh, to have this kind of big paddle in front here. Worst case, I could knock it with my forehead if, the, uh, if uh, things started to go pretty awry pretty quickly on the drill press. Now basically, you can see the two wires that run in, one coming from the power supply into the switch, back out to the, uh, the VFD, and then the other wire coming in from the motor. Now originally when I ordered this VFD, I got it online. It was around 190 some odd dollars delivered uh, to my house here, and I kind of went with this model. I originally had a Toshiba that I was going to use, but I realized that it had an initial only amp. I think drove around five amps, which is what this motor was. And the more I kind of read on the web, everybody said you really want to have a little bit of cushion, something like seven amps, two amps over. And so basically, this one fit the bill a little bit better. So between what I paid for the drill press, which is around 446 dollars, plus the uh, inverter, let's just call it 200, I got about 650 dollars in there. Plus with the steel for the base, let's just call it 675. So I still think it's a pretty decent value considering uh, the cheapest I think these in pretty rough shape are between eight and nine hundred bucks and between twelve hundred dollars, you know, in decent shape. So I figure kind of a fifty percent off retail is for me at least still a pretty good bargain and save me some money to look for some other tools. But let me kind of walk you through now the operation of the VFD. In doing that, I had to mount it to the drill press, and so I created this uh, frame right here out of three quarter inch angle and then put a piece of wood in there. Uh, my wife tells me my paint color choice is not exactly correct. I'm a little bit of color blind and I guess my gold didn't quite match up with the paramatic gold. But uh, I actually ran into an issue as uh, you mentioned as I t told you in my original intro. I'll tell you both the warts and the good news when I built something. I ran into my first major snag is I think when I read this uh, the website they had inversed the width and the height of this thing and how deep this was on the website. And so what happens is this thing sticks out a little bit further than I anticipated. I really was going to take the box, mount it in the center here, and just like I did here, route 
the wires coming in from the motor. You do the same thing at the top for the uh, feed coming in. Unfortunately, I couldn't mount it on the center, and I'll show you why. My first design change is when I actually operate the coil lever here, you can see I basically have end up with about a quarter of an inch clearance coming past the box. So I couldn't mount it any lower. I had to kind of redo my mounting here. So what I think I'll do is I'll end up kind of redoing my frame here, kind of create a little bit of an angle out there and be able to, uh, to kind of mount that back in the center and do a little bit better job on my wiring instead of having this big cable sticking out from here. Well, let me go ahead and operate, show you how it operates here. So I'm going to go ahead and back over here. We'll hit the start button. You can see it shows uh, 220, and then it shows basically kind of initial starting value of around 15 hertz. So what we do is we're going to go ahead and click Run. See it go ahead and ramps up, and you'll look down here. You'll see the quill basically beginning to move, pretty low speed. And as I turn this dial right here, I can begin to ramp up the speed, and you can hear the motor start to increase. And you can see the quill basically go up. Hertz, which is about full speed. And basically hit the run stop button, it shuts back off, or I can hit this button right here. Basically, I think that's an error message saying it's basically lost power. I'm still working on programming this thing. I'm not sure who writes these manuals, but it's a nightmare. But I'm slowly getting this thing done and operational. I had the only chuck I could find handy that I had was this uh, basically keyless chuck. I haven't even shot anything in here yet to even see if it's worth a darn, but I may end up having to put a different chuck in here to make it worthwhile. But anyway, I just want to kind of give you guys an update. It was a pretty simple process. Uh, probably took me longer to mount the VFD than anything else. Again, the base, the rest of the drill press, you can see it's in pretty good shape. Column has no scarring on it. Uh, quill, column and everything else is in pretty good shape. Only has a couple dings in the table. We've got one little uh, Drill here, and we got one little nick right over here. Other than that, the table's in pretty good shape. So it looks like it was uh, barely used. I still got a little more cleanup to do, but all in all, I'm pretty happy with the project and looking forward to uh, starting on the next one. Again, this is Duker from the Garage Drill. Appreciate y'all watching. Thanks.